Okay, so I would like to um, do a video of common problems. Um, so I'm gonna try to do everything wrong that I can possibly think of. Um, first thing I'm gonna do wrong is start off with a um, big sloppy mess. Um, and maybe I'll even take some of the clay that I've been working with previously and try to get it on here. Now, what I'm going to do to myself with this is I have now made a very slick and messy surface here and I have a slick and messy surface here. And that water in between here is gonna need to get out or move around or disperse somehow. Um, because if it doesn't, then what happens is this is gonna slide all over the place. So a lot of the time students are good enough, they're like, okay, I can clean the wheel, but then they take their goopy hands and they put it all over this clay. And now, what's the point? Okay, so you do that and then what's going to happen is you can already see how easily this moves around on me and it's even stopping while the wheel's moving, this isn't moving. Okay, so it's happening because we don't have a good seal. Um, so first thing that you can do with that is go back, clean up your wheel. Um, get rid uh, like this should be dry so this is actually like clean enough like there's not like goop on there and it's not wet and then I'm also gonna scrape off some of the extra um, like goop that we got on here and then with super confidence because now if you, like once you have that wet goopy stuff you have to really work to get it out of the way so I might even just splatter some things yeah I did do some splattering if you if you're ever in a place where you have neighbors while you're doing this, um, you know, warn them, give them a heads up. Okay, so that's problem one that we should have gotten rid of. Okay, now sealing our base. That's really important. That's going to keep that water from going underneath. That's what's causing that problem. Next problem that I see is I see this and people are really good about pushing forward and then that happens. That is because you don't have the downward pressure. And now we have this problem again, where they're like, oh, I'll just put it back on. No, you can't just put it back on. We gotta make sure that our connection is good. If you start off with a bad connection, your life is hard, guys. Okay, so I clean this off, clean that off, and then we're gonna slap it down again with confidence. Okay, seal my base. Now the compression, because the thing you need to remember about compression, guys, is that compression needs to push down into the clay. And then I don't even know what this chunk of stuff is. Oh, it's just like some garbage that I found in there. Um, I strongly recommend that you don't try to re-throw the same ball of clay over and over again. If you want to reuse that clay, you are going to need to re-wedge it. Um, before you can use it again. Um, as demonstrated by me, like in two seconds, I had crud in here, like this has already got a couple of little like air bubble things going on. It's not pretty. Um, so now I'm gonna push this down. So I have my slightly nicer ball and remember this pressure here, this pressure here. If you do not have your thumbs down on top, then we're doing it wrong. If you have your thumbs down on top and you're doing this, then you're also doing it wrong, okay? Because now all of a sudden we have a hole and you're like, well, that's great. I'm already just one step ahead, except for when we see this, this hole isn't in the center. And so there's this side has more clay than this side. So if you're ending up with uneven walls, part of that is because you actually have more clay on one side than the other side. So making sure that you get that centering bit, spend a little bit of extra time on it. Like, I mean, not forever, guys. If nothing's happening while you're doing this, then that means that you need to apply more pressure, okay? So again, wrist, um, wrist is pointing into the, or the heel of your hand is pointing into the center. This should be lined up with your arm and it should be pointed directly towards the center. Number one thing that I watch everybody do is this comes over to the side. That's where these fingers become really helpful because I just use them to keep it in place so that I'm not wiggling all over the place. Okay, top hand over the top. Okay, and you get it really nice. 
and then you come off really quick. And you should be able to see it probably from um, our side view that there's actually like a little um, like twist to it or like a lean to it. And so as long as, and that lean is fine, but we just have to come off slowly and everything's going to be okay. So if you are the type that tends to come off a little bit fast and you're constantly getting this like it doesn't feel wobbly and then you take your hands off and it looks wobbly, then that means you are coming off too fast. If you are having difficulty, like, okay, so I'm going to spread my arms out here <laughs> and now I'm going to try to center. Okay, so this is where, like, when this is happening, your arms are spread out. You have separated them from your body and you are not actually pushing with your body weight. You are pushing with your arm strength, which in my case is garbage. And honestly, I've watched really big dudes um, have this little piece of clay, push them all over the place. You wanna bring this in as close as you can into your body and start to push that in. And then we can start to push down. Okay, so let's go back. Let's watch that again. I'll spread my arms out. Oh, look at how easy and quick it is to do that. Oh my gosh. So if you are having, like, it's really hard for me to get it to do that when my arms are in. And it's really easy for me to get it to do this when my arms are out. So if you have a bunch of this stuff over on the side and it is, you just can't get it to come off, off of the um, wheel and it's just making your hands move all over the place, then this is the perfect time to just take a little bit of that off. And this little ridge right here is gonna help you out quite a bit. Okay, and now I can just push forward right there and then I'll give it a little bit of a push down because I don't want it to fly off. and then I'll take my hands off slowly. Next fun thing that I see all the time, I see this one. What the heck is that? So, from the top view, you guys should have been able to see that my hand, I actually just moved my hand out here. Um, and as I'm moving my hand out here, now it's not actually creating, there's like a little like wedge here that I have with my hand. And that's what's actually creating that side shape. But by separating it over here, now all of a sudden I'm just pushing down clay over here and I'm pushing it back up over on the side and it's creating that weirdness, okay? To bring this back in, the first thing I'm gonna do is go, I'm gonna rewind back to, the, um, to my centering, I mean my compression, and then I'll go back over to my centering and make sure that this heel of my hand is connected to my hand, my other hand, okay? Um, and then I generally have this angled up just a little bit because it's not important for me to have it down in the middle. If you're ending up with a thing down in the middle like that, you're pushing too hard on this end of your hand. You need to apply more pressure down here. Okay, remember if it's hot or sticky, add more water. And also um, a good wheel speed, like I like medium to fast. You will do much better in a medium to fast um, when you are centering. Now, once we start to lift, I will slow this down. And especially as my pocket's wider, I will slow this down. But when I'm centering, the faster the speed, the easier it actually goes. Okay, so now let's put a hole into the center. Um, and what I see a lot of is I'll see like this, and you're like, Laura, why am I getting that? It's because my thumb wasn't in the center, okay? I moved my thumb into the center, and everything's okay. Now, also things like to go off-center during this. So if I don't have this, if I have this too dry, so let's just show. And you can see that my thumb is starting to catch, and it's starting to wobble a little bit.
okay? And I'm also like, I let go of the support of both of my hands, because as soon as I had both hands together, like it was way more supported. Um, as soon as I let go of both of that, su that support, now all of a sudden it's wobbling a little bit. Okay, and I can bring that back in just by using both hands again. So both of your hands should be working together and touching as much as humanly possible. If your hands are not touching, then my question to you is why? Um, there are a couple of instances where your hands can't touch um, when your pots get larger, but at this scale, and that's why I had you guys do it at that sort of softball size. Um, at this scale, there's no reason why your hands shouldn't touch through 90% of your process, okay? So when you're doing this, and I think it's really helpful to print out that sheet that I gave you, um, when you run into problems, find out where you are in your process and start paying attention to that moment. I want you to replace all of the negative words that are in your head with your positive words, which actually not even positive words, it's just neutral words of what do I need to do. Okay, so let's say that this is where we're at with our like volcano we or at, or even where we were at with our hole or something like that okay our walls aren't even anymore like things are a little bit of a mess we can fix this again nice firm pressure here pointed into the center both hands working together now i'm still i'm using this part of my hand and my thumb and i'm pushing this part so i'm making like this little like U shape here and I'm pushing that down over the top of this so that I can maintain the shape of my interior without like collapsing it down but also force the rest of the clay to even out going through this hole that is being forced through with my two hands okay so now we're here we have our hole, everything's awesome, and now we're gonna go lift. Um, I watch people, like they're like, no, Laura, I am left-handed, um, and so I wanna throw over here. If you wanna throw over here, then that means that you need to reverse the direction of your wheel, okay? Because in the, and honestly, it's this isn't a right or left-handed thing, this is literally like a hemisphere slash like continent thing. Um, if we um, were over in Japan or um, England, Britain, whatever, um, then we would possibly be throwing in the opposite direction. Um, if, but we're here um, and we're rebels and we like counterclockwise. And so that means that we are working over on this side of the wheel. Um, both hands are always working, and that's why this is not a left or a right thing. This is very much about just the direction that you like to spin your wheel. Okay, so don't worry about that part. Um, if you are adamant or you have learned by um, throwing clockwise, by all means do that. But that means that all of your pieces need to be, all of your hand motions are just going to be a mirror image over on the other side. The reason why we don't want to use this side of the wheel is so if we're going this way, it's really easy for me to get my hand stuck in this and gouge it, um, gouge the clay, gouge my finger and working on a larger piece. Um, you can actually really hurt yourself because you can really like jam your finger or something into that clay. Okay, so we always want to be over on the right hand side because that's the direction in which the clay is moving away from us. Um, and if you want to do, if you want to throw clockwise, then you need to be over on the um, left hand side and again having the clay move away from you um, and then you're going to be fine. Um, okay, so lifting. Um, where I watch people go wrong, there's this mistaken like idea that if you touch more surface area, you have more control. And that is not true. That means that you actually have more friction, not more control. 
So we don't want friction because when we have friction, we have to add more water. And when we add more water, we have, our clay breaks down faster, um, especially when you're working with more fragile um, clays like porcelains and that sort of stuff. It just isn't going to play well with it. Okay, so let's do a lift. So I'm going to use my sponge so that way I don't have to switch my hand, like go and get more water like frequently. Um, my inside hand, I'm going to use this part of my finger. And now people can, you can totally change your hand position. There is not a like perfect hand position. The theory behind what your hand position should be is pinpoint pressure. So we could do it with our knuckles, which is, I'm going to need to use that part of my finger because it's too small. I could do this with my knuckles. I could lift. Now that wobble's happening because I didn't quite have enough um, water in that. Okay. And then I'm going to bring that back down. Let's do another one. And if you're having problems, guys, You can rewind it. However, I would not spend a long period of time on this. You are 100% better going fully through the process um, than sitting and trying to perfect each little moment. Um, because the longer you work with the clay, the less awesome this is going to be and the less likelihood you have it going well for you. Okay, so again, my fingers are locked in. I want to have my fingers touching together as much as possible, and I want to have my hands connected. A lot of times students do not keep their hands together, and then all of a sudden they're doing this, and they're like, Laura, why is this going drastically like wrong and weird and like not, and it's falling apart, that sort of stuff. Okay, um, or the other one is, is that they'll just go too fast. And then you get that little like wobble too. So if you're getting big lines along the side, you are going too fast. Okay, so I'm gonna drag this in and lift it up. The other thing that I see people do all the time is they will go in and they'll start bringing their hands in, hands in, hands in, hands in, until and they just keep going in and if you just keep going in eventually there's not going to be a space in between your hands anymore and that's not going to do you any good um, so instead of trying to mush this back down i am going to actually just cut this bit off so when your walls are really thin you don't have as much ability to kind of rewind the thinner your walls the less likely you are to bring it back if it's still very thick, like thicker than your thumb, it's really easy to go back and forth um, and move that clay around. I say really easy, but you know, everything takes practice. It's much easier. Now, also look at how this is going. I have this slope here. Um, and sometimes with beginning students, that's even more exaggerated in that it's like really heavy um, and like it's a V shape on the inside, that sort of stuff. What we want to do is on the inside, I'm going to bring my hand in and just pull that out so that I can establish that flat base. And then I'm going to make sure that I keep this finger over down in that bottom corner as I push, bottom corner on the inside, as I push from the outside against the wheel head and then start to lift that up. Now, you may end up with like a little clay in your hands there or like it's chunking up or going over the edge. That is not a big deal. If you don't like it, it just means that you need to change the angle of your hand a little bit. Sometimes it means that your angle is just a little too heavy there when it needs to be a little bit more of a V, like a funnel for it to go into. Okay, so I'm gonna go back down again. I'm gonna grab that clay And now I'm going to try to give us another like problem. And this problem comes about by having your clay be too dry. So I'm going to try to dry this out as much as I can. Um,
okay and now we're starting to see like a little like wobble right around here and what's happening ah there it is this is our little like George or experiment what's happening is the walls are thin um I have a lot of drag on here because my clay is super dry and I also have a lot of pressure so if you have that starting to happen that means you should just pull back on your pressure um, and when I say pressure, I mean the pressure, the force that you're pushing against your wall. So I'm going to go back, add some water to this. And then just go back over it nice and slow. Um, and that fixes that. Last thing, um, I mean, there's so many other ways that things can go wrong, but I think this is a good, good way to start. Um, the last thing that I'm going to do is just bring this out and turn this so if you thought that you were, whoop, so this down here, so this is because my wall is too thin. Okay, so I can try to bring that up again, but the clay, when it's really thin, and I'll show you, um, will start to sit down on itself. Also, if you are ending up with bowls instead of cylinders, that is because you are applying pressure. It just takes the tiniest bit of pressure to pull this all out. And see how this is starting to collapse a little bit? So the clay, I've been working with this clay for um, too long now. Um, it is very like wobbly. Um, it's very grumpy with me. Um, and it's gonna be tricky for me to try to get it to do too much else. Right, because that I barely touched that and it sat down and it still has a little bit of wobble. But guys, so I stop it. What wobble? It's fine. So don't like freak out about little like wobbles and stuff. Like we're we're a beginner. You are going to do better by not mucking with this anymore and going through that process again and use that 10 minute timer, okay? All right, try some things out. It's gonna be great. Oh, here, I'll cut this in half so you guys can see how thin that wall got. Okay, so this is this, and it's not that it's bad to throw this thin, it's just that you are now going through a lot more problems. Um, and in the process of throwing this thin while having the clay be, um, having worked with it for so long, this clay is just really tired and it does not want to play with me anymore. Okay, so that's what we're thinking about. Go try this on your own.